Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And then Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? You see, under the old covenant, Israel could not be sure that God was on their side. In fact, Joshua asked the question, are you for us or for our enemies? And what was the angel's response? Neither. So Joshua says, what is the message then? And the angel said, take off your sandals. Now, taking off your sandals is very significant because in Bible times, when someone made a covenant with another person, one of the objects that they would often take off in order to make a covenant was the sandals. You see, I believe what Joshua was doing, he was tapping into the new covenant. Even though Christ had not yet died, by taking off his sandals, he's saying, I now realize God is on the side of the blood. God is on the side of the covenant. And it's also interesting. Now, now think about this for a moment. Joshua succeeds Moses as the new leader. Now Moses represents the law. Remember John 1, the law was given through Moses. Isn't it interesting that Moses could not bring the children of Israel into the promised land, could he? He failed. Why? Moses got angry one time and struck the rock twice, and that rock was Christ. He's in his own effort, he's trying to enter the promised land and he fails and he cannot bring Israel into the promised land. You see, the law can never bring you into the promises of God. But Joshua, who comes after Moses, is a picture of Jesus Christ. In fact, the name Jesus in Hebrew is the name Yeshua. Joshua in Hebrew is Yeshua. Did you know the name Jesus is the same name for Joshua? And just... As Moses could not bring Israel into the promised land, and Joshua could, Joshua represents Jesus, he was able to bring everyone into the promises of God. So it is with Christ, Yeshua. He can bring us into the promises of God. Why? Because when you accept Yeshua, guess what happens? God is on your side. Amen. That's a pitiful clap, but it'll get better as I progress. See, and, and, and my point is this, you can never, you can never reign in life if you think that God is not for you. You have to believe he is on your side. And under what basis do you have that he's under, on your side? Because you're a good fella? Well, God knows I try to do my best. Wrong. He's on your side because of the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. It is him who made us right with God through the cross. And when you believe that, then what happens? You come to recognize God is for you. And, and I think too often we don't realize this because I have a feeling that there's a lot of people who are what I call schizophrenic Christians. Now, now I don't mean schizophrenic in the legal psychiatric illness. I'm talking about people who cannot think clearly about the fact God's on their side. So you have some Christians who thinks that God punishes with sickness and poverty and disasters. And the reason why they think that is because they don't recognize God's on their side. They really think God's out to get them. And you have people who think this way. Well, you know, Pastor, I know God is good, but sometimes he blesses me, but other times he curses me. Schizo. <laughs> Today, you know, he prospers me, but tomorrow he may give me poverty to humble me. Schizo. 
Well, now he heals me, but later he may make me sick to teach me a lesson. Schizo, thank you. Well, now he forgives all my sins, but later he may make me pay for them. I want to ask you, do, are, do you have a schizo of view of, of God being on your side? One moment he's on your side, but the next moment he's opposing you. Well, how will you ever take your Jericho? And Joshua took Jericho, why? He took off his sandals, which signifies a covenant. And then he's told by the angel, march around the city of Jericho for six days and do nothing, say nothing. Now, what does that mean? Marching around Jericho for seven, six days, doing and saying nothing. You know what God is saying? This is not going to be your efforts. It is not going to be your works that's going to bring you into your Jericho. It's going to be my work. So I don't want you to say and do anything so that in the end, you'll have to look at me and say, I did it all. You getting this? He's trying to tell them. In other words, that's the new covenant, isn't it? Is that Jesus did everything for us. It's not, see, most of us have a Christianity that says, do, do, do. But God says, it's done, done, done. Amen? And see, many of us are doing and doing to try to get our Jericho. And Jericho, by the way, literally means a sweet place. Turn to someone and say, I have a sweet place. Oh, and, and, you, and how are you going to get your sweet place? Not by doing, 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 but by marching and doing and saying nothing. Let God do it. And in the final day, you know what their only obligation was? Blow the trumpet. Da -da -da -da! You know what that is? Signifying that's all we can do is speak the word of God. Confess what God has said and let our confession be our possession. Yes. 